Hello everyone, welcome to Jolly Molly TV. Today we're going to do another fun block in Kimberbell's Quilting Through the Seasons Ladder Quilt Project. And today we're going to be working on this block right here, which is the wall gallery number one with this frame here and that mirror right there. So let's go ahead and head over to our embroidery machines and let's get started. I also want to give a huge shout out again. Thank you so much to my girlfriend's quilt shop for sponsoring me and sending me the CD, the embellishments and the fabric kit and order so that I can show you how to make this project. If you still need some of these supplies for this project, please visit my girlfriend's quilt shop using the link down below and help me give them a big thanks for supporting me and enabling me to make this video series for you. Huge thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My girlfriend's quilt shop. Okay, we're at the machine. I've got my large hoop. This is an eight by 12 hoop for this design for the wall gallery number one. I'm checking my bobbin. I've got a little bit left. It's about halfway, so I can use that to get started today just to remind myself that I will have to put another one in in a little bit then I need you to get your plastic pouch system or bag system that you've labeled number seven for the wall gallery one it has our fabrics in it we're gonna need that you're also gonna need a piece from your embellishment kit which is the silver fabric. You don't want the silver mylar for the mirror part. You want the silver fabric. It's almost like a piece of embroidery leather, but it's nice and shiny. Then you also need the gold mylar that is in your embellishment kit. So get that out and keep that handy off to one side. And last thing you're gonna need is a piece of batting which is a seven by nine inch that we've pre-cut. You need one piece of that and put that aside. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the screen cam and let's load the design. Okay, so I have a brother dream machine. If you have something similar, you can follow along. I'm gonna go to embroidery. I'm gonna go to my flash drive because I keep all my designs on the flash drive going to go to quilting through the seasons and I'm going to go to the quilting designs first and the design that we're looking for is the stars six by eight so I'm going to go to my stars subfolder let it load and here's the one we're looking for the six by eight I really like that design that's fun okay I'm going to click set and now I'm going to add another design on top of this. If your machine can't add, no worries. You're going to stitch this design out first. Then you're going to clear your machine memory and you're going to load the main embroidery design. Stitch that out. No problem. But if your machine can add, it'll save just a teeny bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and add it now. Go back to my flash drive, back to quilting through the seasons. And now I'm going to go to the main quilt. And this is wall gallery number one. So I am looking for this one right here that has the two frames, the mirror one and the oval one. That's what we're looking for. So I'm going to click set. This design is centered thanks to Kimberbell's little extra alignment line. So we don't need to do anything to this at all. We just click embroidery. All right, let's go back to the hoop cam. I also want to give another thank you to another sponsor in this video, Kimberbell, for providing me with the quilting designs to be able to make this project absolutely amazing using their block by block quilting designs. Thank you so much, Kimberbell. And if you're interested in getting these quilting designs, please use the link in the description below and I'll take you right to it and you can choose the bundle of the quilting designs or you can also just get individual designs if you like it all florals or all sayings, which I believe they call time. You can choose which designs you wanna put in your project. So please check out the link down below for Kimberbell.com. 
Okay, I just pulled my background fabric out of my plastic pouch system to see what color it is, and it's a very nice ivory. So I've selected a matching ivory thread that I'm gonna put in the top of my machine. It's a little bright. There, that's a little bit better. You can see it better. But when it's a light colored fabric, I gotta turn that light off so you can see clearer. So I'm gonna put this matching ivory thread up at the top of my machine, and then we'll stitch the first stitch, which will be a placement line for the batting. So put a thread that matches your background fabric in the top of your machine, and we're gonna get stitching. This is the fun part. All that fabric prep and cutting everything is a lot of work, but it all leads us to this fun part where we get to stitch out the designs. So if you got your thread loaded, let's go ahead and put the foot down and stitch out the placement line for the batting. Here we go. Okay, so now we're going to get our batting and we're going to lay it down and make sure that you cover all of that placement line on all sides top, bottom, left, and right. And when you've got that down, you can either tape it or just hold it in place like I do. Just keep your fingers away from the moving needle. Put the foot down and let's tack down the batting. So now I want you to take the hoop off the machine, take this over to a table, and let's trim away all of the excess batting around the outside of that stitch line. All right, now that we've got the batting all trimmed up, let's put the foot down, keep the same ivory thread up on top, and let's stitch out the placement line for the fabric. Okay, so now let's lay down our fabric and make sure that you cover that placement line. And then we're going to use the feel the batting technique where you can actually feel the batting through the fabric. And I know there it is on that side and there it is. So I've got plenty of room on all sides. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the foot down and we're going to tack down the fabric. Here we go. Okay, got a couple of loose threads there I want to get up before they get quilted onto the top of that fabric, all right? So now we're going to get to my favorite part, which is the quilting design. I'm going to leave the same color ivory thread up at the top of my machine and let it do the quilting in that color. I think that'll look very nice. And I want the two frames that we're going to be adding later to be the focal point. And I want the quilting just to kind of go back into the background. So that's the color thread I'm going to use. You choose the thread color you would like to do your quilting in and put that color thread in the top of your machine. This is an eight minute in real life stitch out. All right, so let's put the foot down and enjoy watching this stitch out the quilting. Here we go. just love that. I think that is one of my most favorite quilting designs that I've seen so far with Cranberry Belt. I just love that. Okay, so I'm going to take this off real quick. I'm going to switch out my bobbin thread now 
because my sensor is not working properly because I want to have a full bobbin of thread for when we get to the next stages and we're doing satin stitch outlines and things like that. I don't want to have to worry about switching out my bobbin thread then. So I'm going to go ahead and load it now and I'll use up the little bit that's left on that one for like future placement lines and things like that. So we don't want to waste any of that. So I'm going to go ahead and put the hoop back on my machine. And now I'm going to switch my thread in the top of my machine to a black thread. We're going to be stitching out the placement line for the oval portrait. And when we get to the tack down, it's going to be black. So I'm going to go ahead and put black thread in the top of my machine now so that we are ready to go for the next few stitches. So go ahead and put black thread in the top of your machine if you have the kit or if you're using a different color fabric, put a matching color thread in the top of your machine that will match that upcoming fabric. And let's stitch out the placement line for the oval portrait. This step is easy. All you need to do is put that piece of black fabric down and make sure that you cover the placement lines on all sides. Now, if you're using different fabric, make sure you put the fabric right side up. Okay, so now let's put your foot down, keep black thread up on top, and let's tack down this fabric. Okay, so now we're going to take the hoop off the machine. Let's take it over to the table and I'm going to show you how to trim away the excess fabric. We've got that trimmed up nicely. The next step is going to involve a silver fabric if you have the kit. So I'm going to go ahead and put a silver thread in the top of my machine. Okay, so whatever color thread you're going to be using for the outside of this frame, put that color thread on the top of your machine and let's put the foot down and let's stitch out the placement line for that outer frame fabric. Okay, now take that silver fabric, if you have the kit, and place it down and make sure that you cover all sides of that outer placement line, top and bottom, okay? And when you've got that in place, we're gonna go ahead and grab your stiletto, or you can tape it if you wish. Just keep your fingers away from that needle, and let's tack down this fabric using the same silver thread up above. Here we go. That's gonna be cool. Okay, now we're gonna take the hoop off the machine and take it over to the table. And I'm gonna show you how to trim away the excess fabric away from the outside and the inside of this oval. Now the trick on this is you wanna just do a slight little snip of the silver fabric and not hit the black fabric down in the middle, all right? We wanna take away just the top layer of the silver fabric and not touch the black fabric down below. <music>
Okay, so we're back at the machine. I accidentally nicked the black fabric here and then it came out from underneath the tack down stitch from below. But I'm not going to worry about it. This is going to be okay. The reason being is in future steps, we're going to be doing a satin stitch on this edge here all around the inside. So when that happens, I just need to make sure it doesn't catch this fabric as it does the satin stitch and it will tack it down and it will disappear. So as long as you nick it on the edge, it's going to be okay. We're going to start working on this frame over here and then we're going to come back to this one when the machine does the satin stitch and then we will see how it does. But I think it'll be okay because of that satin stitch that's coming up. All right. No worries. We got this. All right. So now I'm going to take away the silver thread that I have up on top. Okay. And now we're going to be working on the top of the mirror here on the right. So the mylar where we're going to be working with in just a second is gold. So I want to go ahead and put a gold thread in the top of my machine. So it'll match that mylar and we can use it for the next couple steps here. So load a gold thread in the top of your machine and we're going to be stitching out the placement line for the mylar. Oh, and I got a loop and you got to get the loops out because it will wrap around your foot, break a needle or worse. Okay. So we got gold thread up above. Let's stitch out the placement line for the mylar. Okay, I've got a little straggler thread I want to get out there. Okay, so now we're going to put the mylar down. Get this pretty gold mylar. And like I said, I don't pre-cut my embellishments, I just take the whole piece and I lay it down so I have enough to do what I need to do. I'm not even going to tape it into place. I'm just going to put the foot down, use my stylus to hold it, and use the gold thread up above, and let's put down the mylar. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so now I'm going to take the hoop off the machine. And now all I need to do is very gently tear away this excess mylar. Very, very gently. It just rips very nicely away. And one little corner. And there you go. And see? That's all I used in the mylar was just one little corner. That's why I don't pre-cut because this way I can try to maximize and get more out of my embellishments than what you could normally if you pre-cut those embellishments. So that's why I never pre-cut my embellishments. Okay, that's pretty. Okay, let's put the hoop back on. I love mylar accents. I've got a lot of projects planned coming up and many of them include mylar, so it's gonna be fun. All right, now we're gonna stitch the satin outline. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave gold thread up above because I want it to match my frame outline that I'm gonna be doing later, which is also gonna be gold. So my gold thread is still up on top. Let's stitch out this satin outline. Okay, we're going to do another thread switch. We're going to go back to the silver thread that we used on this oval over here. And we're going to use that as the placement line and the tack down for the pretty silver fabric that we're going to do. Okay, so go ahead and put a matching silver thread in the top of your machine. 
Make sure you take out the old thread on the bottom first. <laughs> and here we go. And we're going to be stitching out the placement line for the silver fabric. I can't wait to do this part. Okay, ready? Here we go. Okay, so now we've got this pretty silver fabric. It's got like a felt, soft felt backing here. You want to make sure you have this silver fabric, not mylar, because the mylar won't hold up in the middle. You want this silver fabric. Now mine came and it was a little bit dusty. I was able to wipe it down gently with a soft cloth. It has a little mar in the middle of mine over here, so I want to make sure that I'm using the left side and not that mar. You want to try to get the mirror as nice as you possibly can. So now we're going to go ahead and make sure that we cover that placement line with a little bit like a quarter of an inch on the one side. And I'm just double check, make sure there it is. I'm going to go by a quarter of an inch past and I'm a quarter of an inch on the left side as well. So you can tape this in place or do what I do and just use your stylus to hold it down. Keep your fingers away from that needle though. A silver thread up on top, foot down. Oh, I need to go up just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. There we go, foot down and let's tack down this pretty silver fabric. Isn't that pretty? Okay, now I'm going to take the hoop over to the table and I'm going to show you how to trim around the outside of this silver fabric. Make sure you don't nick the stitches. You can get close, but you don't have to get right on top of it because there's going to be a satin stitch outline around the outside of this one. All right, so let's get that trimmed up. Isn't that pretty? I love that silver fabric. I'm gonna have to get some more of that. Okay, so now we still have silver thread up on top. Now it's time where the machine is gonna do the satin stitch outline around this inner edge. So I just wanna eyeball it and make sure that nothing gets caught as it comes around this corner where I have my boo-boo. So I'm just gonna keep the stylus on the ready just in case it looks like it's gonna get stuck on the foot, but I think we're gonna be all right. So let's put the foot down and this is a three minute stitch out in real life. Here we go. nice so now I'm going to swap out my thread for a cream which is going to be the flower color inside of this oval frame I think that would be nice I'm going to go with what Kimberbell suggested a cream and then we're going to do gold I think in the next step so it'll be like a cream with a gold flower I think that's nice so put a cream or an ivory color or whatever color you choose your flower to be. Put that color thread in the top of your machine. And we're going to stitch out this flower. It's about a four minute in real life stitch out. And we have a loop. Got to get that loop out. All right, here we go. Foot down and let's stitch it out.
This is turning out really nicely. All right, so I'm gonna take that cream thread out and I'm gonna put the gold thread back in because now it's gonna do some gold accents on this flower. And then I think we'll be moving on to the gold frame. So let's go ahead and put gold thread in the top of your machine. And this is a two minute in real life stitch out, just adding gold accents to the flower. All right, you ready? All right, let's go. All right, that looks pretty. Now I was wrong. I thought it was going to go over and do the gold frame and it did not. It now it went silver thread to do the satin outline on the outside of that oval frame. So I'm going to put silver thread in the top of my machine and we will stitch this out and then we'll go back to the gold. See, my logic said, oh, I would stick to gold and go over and do the gold frame and then come back and do the silver frame last, but that's not how it wants to do it. So we will follow the machine and do what it wants to do. Here we go. Okay. So make sure you don't have a loop. Let's put the foot down and stitch out the satin outline. This is a six minute stitch out. Here we go. Very nice. Now it wants the gold thread. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do the frame. So I'm going to put this gold thread back in the top of my machine. And we're almost done. You've got this. This is turning out to be a really pretty block. So let's get that gold thread loaded. And this is a seven minute in real life stitch out. It's going to do the satin border along the outer edge of this frame. All right. So foot down, gold thread up above. Here we go. Very nice. Okay, so we've got one color change left. I'm going to put a white thread in the top of my machine because I want to stitch out the placement line for the Velcro. All right, this block is going to have two little Velcro circles that's going to stitch out, and we're going to put little half inch by half inch squares on it. And that will allow us to attach an embellishment to it. There we go. After we're all done with the base quilt. So let's go ahead and put white thread up on top, foot down, and let's stitch out the placement lines for the Velcro. Okay, so now let's take the hoop off the machine. There we go. And let's take it over to the table and I'm gonna show you how to attach the Velcro to this block. 
Okay, isn't this amazing? That turned out really cool. Okay, so now we have one step left to do. We need to add Velcro to this block to allow a way to attach the accessories. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a half an inch off of this, keep my fingers away from the rotary cutter. Cut a half inch strip, reattach this so it doesn't come undone. There we go. And then I'm going to cut this also in half. So I have two tiny little squares that are one half inch by one half inch. Now I'm going to use Julet Glue. This is by Aileen's. And this is a perfect embellishing glue to embellish metal, crystals, Velcro, anything to fabric. All right, so that works really nicely. So now what I want to do is I've got a circle here and a circle here. I want to gently add some glue, not a lot. Oh, a little bit more than I wanted to, but that'll be all right. And a little bit there. And I want to center the Velcro over that circle, just like that. And this one will ooze out a little bit, but that's okay. We can mop up the excess. I'm going to hold it down nice and tight. Okay, and now I'm going to get a paper towel. Okay, I grabbed a napkin instead. Just going to wrap it up. I'm just going to get rid of that excess glue that kind of came out the sides there. There we go. That's great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit and dry overnight. Once it does, I'll come back and we'll finish up this block by doing a tack down stitch on top of that Velcro, but we want to make sure this is completely dry before we do that. So I'll meet you right back here. Okay, we're back at the machine. Those Velcro little squares have dried up nicely overnight. So now let's go back to the screen cam. I'm going to show you how we're going to go back and I'm going to reload the design. I'm going to click on embroidery and my flash drive. I'm going to go to quilting through the seasons and I'm going to go to the main quilt. I do not need to reload the quilting design because that's done. I am just looking to reload this one right here that has the mirror and the frame. Okay, we don't need to do anything. Click set and everything's good the way it is. Click embroidery. Now I'm going to use the plus and the minus key and I'm going to go back one stitch. If I go back one stitch, it'll take me to that end alignment stitch, which we're not going to stitch out. Kimberbell does that, so it's their way of telling the computer where to center this block. We're not going to stitch that one. I want to go back one more. And there is the tack down that we need for the Velcro. You could go forward multiple steps and go through every step that we did. You can go that way too. But if you just go backwards, two steps total, you're going to get to this little like stars or asterisks. It's a little going to be a little tack down for the Velcro. And that's what we're going to stitch out. And that's the only thing we have to do. Remember, we're not going to stitch out that last line up here. That's just for alignment. All right. So let's go back to the hoop cam. I've put white thread up on the top of my machine because I want it to match the color of the Velcro. And all we have to do is put the foot down and stitch this out. You ready? We're almost done. Here we go. Okay, that's great. I got a little extra thread on this one, so I'm just going to trim that up. Now we are ready to take the hoop off the machine. Here we go. And now we're going to take it over to the table, and I'm going to show you how to finish up this block. All right. Isn't that an amazing block? 
I love that mirror fabric. That's so cool. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take the block out of the hoop. Okay, and put that aside for right now. And then we're going to square up this block to be eight and a half inches by six and a half inches. And you're gonna be looking for the outside stitch line the one that we use to tack down the fabric and we're going to measure that out and see what it comes out to that from this line to this line is six and a half and from the top line to the bottom line is eight and a half so it's perfect we don't have to do anything except trim along the outside using that stitch line so this is how we do it i'm going to put the ruler down and this stitch line may not be 100% straight, so I'm going to go to the top, and I'm going to go to the bottom, and I'm going to line it up straight. This one's pretty good. All right, so can I see the stitch line underneath my ruler? Yes, I can. So that gives me the first edge to cut on. Okay, so now I'm going to use my mat. And I want to go to eight and a half inches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half is going to be right there. Make sure I'm lined up. And now I can see that I'm right on that stitch line. So then I also want to pull it down and make sure that my ruler also is in line with the stitch line going on this direction. Double check, triple check. Now we're ready to cut. All right. Oops. And one more time. Okay, that's good. So that side's done. So now this side is going to be six and a half. We're going to start as well with the stitch line. That one looks pretty good, pretty straight. So I'm just going to trim off the end because I can see the stitch line right underneath the ruler. Now I'm going to use my mat and line this up so it's six and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. And this time I'm going to end up a little bit on the outside of the stitch line, which is fine because you want your block to be six and a half inches going this direction. And there I am, six and a half. And I trim that up. And like I said, if you're not exactly on that stitch line that's fine because i can sometimes it doesn't go straight and any difference will end up in your seam allowance anyway so you are fine so look at that isn't that a fun block you can see the camera above in the mirror fabric that's fun i love the way that gold is accented in that flower as well it's really pretty so i hope you had as much fun making this block today as i did and I hope you stay tuned here on Jolly Molly TV for more fun and more blocks in Kimber Bell's Quilting Through the Seasons project. If you like this video, please click the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested, I have lots of other videos on this project, on other Kimber Bell projects, on quilt shows, and quilt inspiration videos to give you ideas on quilts that you would like to make on your own all right so until i see you next time take care everybody and happy stitching bye bye